Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our fourth and final day of the December 2020 Virtual Training Institute. I see people beginning to join the room with us, so hopefully you can see and hear us okay. Um, if before we get started, you can go ahead and introduce yourself in your chat box. Nice job, Jinx. You're already getting it started. Uh, your name and where you're from in the chat box so we can see where, where everyone is joining us from. We would really appreciate that. All right, all over the place. It was really interesting. Monday morning, I had a session and somebody said, hello from Singapore. And I nearly choked on my coffee because I'm like, how the heck did you hear about us? That's wonderful. Um, so thank you guys for joining us this morning. Good morning, Jamie. Um, so before we get started, also, I'm gonna go ahead and put a poll up so we can see what your role is within your program. Um, if you can go ahead and also click one option um, after you're done putting where you're from in the chat box. Okay, awesome. Seeing a lot of repeat names, so welcome back. Awesome. So we see we have a number of different instructors. So you're in the right space. This is this is a wonderful uh, conversation and I'm looking forward to having it. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a quick introduction. My name is Gina Davis and I am the Education Program Specialist and PD Coordinator with the Maryland Department of Labor. Um, I like to consider myself like the grand poobah of ceremonies here. So if you guys need anything throughout the, this presentation, feel free to chat me directly. Um, but while you're using the chat box, if you can make sure that you're addressing all panelists and attendees, it's in the drop down arrow, then not only will we be able to see it, but your peers will be able to see your responses as well. Um, I think that's all we have. Um, as you know, these sessions are being recorded and we will do our best to get them on the website um, before the end of the year is my personal goal, but you know, bear with me with that. Um, but without further ado, ugh. Further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Rachel and Xavier, and I hope everyone enjoys. Good morning, everyone. So nice to, I don't see you, but nice to have you. Um, I'm Rachel Riggs. I am the ESL Instructional Specialist for Frederick Community College. Xavier, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure thing. Good morning, everyone. Really delighted to be with you today, be here with you today. I'm Xavier Munoz. I'm the Associate Director of Teaching and Learning with the Literacy Council of Northern Virginia. Um, so just so everyone knows, this will probably only take, you know, our presentation maybe 30 minutes. So if you have any questions, we'll we'll have plenty of time at the end to take any questions or you can put them in the, the Q&A box on Zoom as well and we'll monitor that as well as the chat box. So um, today we want to present to you a fun new kind of PD idea that we have um, called a makerspace. So we're gonna talk a little bit about a, a makerspace that Xavier and I participated in over the summer, the EdTech makerspace, and present to you the, the process of that and some of the results of that makerspace. And then we also wanna show you some um, makerspace teasers for upcoming makerspaces that we are hoping to run in the spring, and then give you some information on how you can participate in our makerspaces. So. I, if this, you know, <laughs> take a sip of coffee for every time I say makerspace. <laughs> okay, so our little poll, um, are you guys seeing how to access this? There should be a link at the top, but I'm not seeing it yet. No, we can't see it, Rachel. So um, oh, we probably okay. just need the code and I can put it in the chat box. So typically it will, okay, hold on. Um, it should, as soon as I click present, it's supposed to show all the information. So let me just try it from here again. Oh, it's not working. Okay. That's okay. Good. Okay. There it is. Okay. So go to, um, oh no, now, now it's gone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
If you show that screen again, um, I'll just type it into the chat box so people can- That would be great. Okay, let me see if I can get to it. I just hit escape and then, oh my gosh, it's just like going away. Okay, you guys, whatever. Let's just put it in, in the chat box. We don't need to get too fancy, right? Um, what word comes to mind when you hear the term makerspace? So I just wanna kind of see what do we all think about um, when we're talking about makerspace. So if you guys wanna just throw it in the chat box, that would be great. What word comes to mind when you hear the term makerspace? Oh, there it goes. Now it's gonna work, of course. So you can also go to this link here at the top, pollev.com slash Rachel Riggs 893, or you can text your answer as well. Thank you, Gina. It's also in, the link is in the chat box. Collaboration, cool. Yes. If that's the only word I get, I'll be happy. <laughs> Creativity. Oh, I like that one too, though. A creative platform, Erin put in the chat. Um, Emily said she does, she's not familiar and she's eager to learn. Good, Emily, you're in the right, you're in the right spot. Pamela said, no idea. Perfect. Good. You're again in the right place. Unsure. Okay, good. We're gonna talk about it. Um, creating and collaborating. That is like. Perfect, creating and collaborating. So if we think about a makerspace, we're thinking about creating something, but with a group and together so that we can create more of it and we can also share it amongst um, the whole group. Organization, yes, it will take, take a lot of organization. Ideas, good. I think some of these probably went together, but yeah, I think we're getting the idea here. Creativity, ideas, collaboration. Okay, Dan said shop fabrication, which is great. Like the, a physical maker space that you would go to, that would be kind of the idea, yeah. Anne says a place to create and collaborate on projects. Jeff says working with colleagues. Okay, awesome. So yeah, creation and collaboration. I think those are two words that really sum it up quite well. Asynchronously, collaborative, we have synchronously and asynchronously. Yes, could be synchronous, could be asynchronous. Absolutely. All right, thanks guys, thanks for sharing. Okay, so the definition of a makerspace, sorry, we've got lots of tabs here. You guys know what it's like navigating all your different windows on Zoom, right? The definition of a makerspace is, a place in which people with shared interests, especially in commute, computing or technology, can gather to work on projects while sharing ideas, equipment, and knowledge. And so if you've heard of maker spaces like in your community, maybe associated with like a library or a community college or something, um, they are kind of like shops, like someone put in the chat, where, where people are um, working on a, a project together. And so that's a very similar idea to what Xavier and I are wanting to launch in the spring. A makerspace where a bunch of teachers are coming together, of course, not physically, it will be virtually, um, but we're getting together and we are learning how to use new tools and then creating resources with those new tools. So just like kind of in a, um, you know, in a trade or something. So just to kind of paint a picture in your mind, if you want to close your eyes, no, you don't. <laughs> just kidding. Um, if you would imagine, right, a community that needs reading material before the printing press, right? So this community needs just some material to maybe teach their children how to read. Um, but they, they don't have that material and no one knows how to make it, except there is someone who knows how to use a pen and put a pen to paper. So that person gets a group together and says, you know what, I'm going to teach you how to use this pen so that we can create the resources that our community needs. So that is what a makerspace is all about. It's about filling a need where we, where we need some kind of resource. Now, in this context, of course, we're talking about um, a teaching resource and getting people together, showing them how to use different tools and then creating the resources together. So that creativity and that collaboration is, is totally on point. 
So Xavier and I, the way that we got connected is we both participated in an ed tech maker space over the summer. Um, this was run by CrowdEd Learning, if you're familiar. And the idea behind the ed tech maker space was to take these supplemental um, reading, well, they're called reading supplements. And so there were all of these reading passages on a website called Reading Skills for Today's Adults. You're probably familiar with it. And they had these supplements that were all in Word documents. So when people, you know, now during the pandemic are going to their website and trying to use their reading passages, using the supplement was really not that easy because, you know, you might have students who don't have, um, who aren't on computers to be able to, to type answers and to manipulate a Word document. And it just wasn't the best um, digital tool for the supplements. And so the whole point of the EdTech Makerspace was to take these supplements and convert them into something that was mobile friendly and also just a little more um, friendly in the digital and remote space that we find ourselves in. So what we did was we took, um, we took the vocabulary sets from the supplement and we were trained how to use Quizlet and create our own Quizlet sets. And so every participant, I think there were like 40 or 50 participants in the makerspace. Every participant made a certain number of Quizlet sets that went along with the reading passages on that website. We also were trained in how to use Google Forms. And so we converted the comprehension check section of that Word document supplement into a Google Form. Okay, so you can kind of see it's just, we're just taking that Word document We've got some vocabulary words and definitions and we're putting it in, in a format that's easier for students to access and easier for teachers to implement in a remote learning environment. So we use Google Forms to create comprehension checks and then we put them all into Wakelets so that students could use a single link to access the reading passage, the vocabulary practice Quizlet set, and the comprehension check on Google Forms. So in the EdTech Makerspace, we were taking something that was already there, right? It was already a resource that was ready to go. And we were converting it into, a, um, into something more mobile friendly, more digital tech friendly. Um, but then along the way, we were also learning how to use Quizlet, Google Forms, and Wakelet. And I learned so much from that. And so now at the end of it, we have all of the participants who now feel a lot more comfortable with these ed tech tools. And then we also have a huge set of, of resources for teachers who need mobile friendly reading materials um, to incorporate in their classes and students who want to study on their own. So the final product of the EdTech Makerspace um, was uh, the, you know, I'm going to go to the link to show you guys actually, because that will be fun. Um, the Marshall Leveled Reading Program. And so on this website, you could download an app that has all of the reading materials that we adapted. Um, there is a leveled library that instructors can in explore um, to find the reading passages by level. And then there's also a spreadsheet where instructors can use like the links from the Google Forms. So if they wanted to see their own students' responses, we have the copy links there that instructors can use. So there's just a whole now a nice and ready to go set of resources for instructors. Um, and here's the leveled Wakelet library. So this is all in crowded learning. I'm gonna pop this um, link into the chat box just so you guys can explore that if you are interested just in the resource. Um, oops, sorry, let me get back here. So, That was the EdTech Makerspace. And so how did we do all of that? We all joined a Google Classroom together. Um, we attended tool training. So we were trained in how to use um, Google Forms, Quizlet and Wakelet. Those were the three trainings that we had to attend. There were open office hours so we could go, You know, if we were having trouble creating one of the resources, we could go and ask questions. 
Um, so that was kind of the learning piece. And then in the actual creation, we were given guides to show us exactly how to um, create the, the final product and given certain specifications for how crowded learning wanted them to come out at the end. Um, we had a timeline, so we were all following a schedule where first we did the Quizlet sets and then that was a couple of weeks and then next we did the Google Forbes and then finally we put it all together in the Wakelet. And then there was a review process. So um, Xavier and I and a couple other participants went through all of the um, final resources and reviewed them and made sure you know there weren't any small issues or, or whatever. Um, so it was, you know, a process of learning, learning to use the tools and then creating resources that are ready to go and look nice and teachers can use them. And all of it took place in a Google Classroom. So that was the EdTech makerspace. And that's kind of what we are modeling our makerspaces after. Um, so I am actually going to hand it over to Xavier now, who is going to present a little teaser for what we might do in our TESOL makerspace. Um, we are hoping to launch the TESOL makerspace in spring of 2021 in March. And we will, at the end of this presentation, be sharing a Google form for anyone who may be interested to express their interest so that you can be put onto an email list and get updates and notifications about the TESOL makerspace. Um, and then eventually, after you've expressed your interest and we've given you your you know, choices of how you want to participate, we will invite everyone to a Google Classroom where we will then run the makerspace and create new resources and learn together and have fun. Um, so let me check on, it does look like there's a question here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Xavier. Thanks very much, Rachel. Um, I completely agree with, with her that it was a really exciting way to learn new tools and do it in a very structured kind of format where we were really guided in creating these resources, but also learning about Creative Commons licenses and how to include appropriate attribution, um, which you know in our field is the more we can credit each other, the better, right? Um, so now I wanted to share a, uh, my screen and then we're gonna Take a look at just a teaser of what uh, you might create if you sign up, um, if you express interest in joining us for our makerspace. Um, so this one is just a sample. That, you know, we're hoping to run a few different ones um, in partnership, in part with Maryland TESOL. Uh, but this one, for me, has a particular relevance using these some literacy level reading resources, which I'll show in just a moment. Um, but to paint the picture. You know, where I work, we have some paid teachers, but a lot of volunteer teachers and class aides. And we are, all of our classes are virtual, but you know, we have students who are uh, less the learners or emergent readers who are, are learning to read in any language for the first time in classes with those who have college degrees and, and higher level credentials. Um, and I don't know about you, but for a lot of our teachers, they're very overwhelmed with learning to teach online and having to take what were print-based materials and make them work in a virtual space. So for me, that challenge is, is ever-present of how can I help create things or work with hopefully a, a makerspace team to make stuff that, that's ready to go, that's informed by uh, effective practices for teaching adult learners, especially those at a literacy level. So uh, let me switch here. Okay, so I want to share one resource that we might use. And again, like Rachel said, you know, we're aiming for things that are open resource. So it's available freely already. Um, so these are ESL story banks from Literacy Minnesota uh, that are free to download. I've been recommending them to teachers for many, many years. And they're informed by a, a balanced literacy approach, kind of taking a whole part whole, where it's not just here's the story, but What's the context? So in this case, Max has a job, we're thinking about work. Uh, we're thinking about maybe getting a job or just improving literacy around work. And so before even getting to the story, the story bank has some pre-reading kind of activities and, and ways to structure you know, the support for, for these literacy learners. And then we move into the story, which is relatively simple uh, in this case. And it has some pictures for that uh, comprehension support and scaffolding. Um, there's some numbered lines so you can get into some college and career readiness skills with citing evidence and so on. Um, and then there's also some reading comprehension things pointing back to the story 
um, and then some other uh, types of activities, maybe some dictation uh, or some phonics work, you know, looking at uh, init word initial consonants or word final consonants. Um, all of these, by the way, these screenshots are of PDFs that you could download from Literacy Minnesota if you'd like. Um, this one here, you're putting words uh, in the correct order for sentences. Um, and they even have some, some of the key vocabulary matched to some pictures. So this for me is really great. Uh, you know, I could take this uh, with a class in a, in a context of a, of a work unit, read the story and then come back out to um, maybe filling out a form or describing what, you know, one's own job. But the challenge is, right, this is a PDF meant for using in person so that you can print and you can cut these up and on a table you can move them around. How does that work with literacy learners online? That's kind of been um, the resources that I'll show you in just a moment, what I've been hoping to create. So, and what we might do in one of the maker spaces. Um, so those reading, reading comprehension questions, well, like Rachel was showing earlier, could put them into a Google form where even if a student just has a smartphone, they could go through these questions. You, they could submit their answers outside of class so that you can see what it is they're understanding or not. You know, they can take the, the quiz as many times as they'd like. Um, or if it's the putting the words of the sentence in the correct order, one way that we might do this is with something called word wall, which I've only learned about just in the past few months or so, where it's, as you can see here, you can, you don't need to type in the, the, the words, even on a mobile device or a computer, you can just touch and drag the words into the correct order and there's some instant feedback there. Um, and as a tool, you can set assignments so you can see what students are, are, are doing or not doing. So there's some of the analytics and assessment data to, to help inform what you're, you're gonna be teaching. Or you know, if that's not something that's gonna work for your class, maybe it could be in a Google slide. Um, where you're transferring what was a PDF into something that as a teacher you could present, you can maybe assign them remote control or you can have them direct you to where to move the words to make the sentence. Um, or for another possibility, you might use Google Jamboard with, with a similar idea that again, there are these different words and either together in class modeling it or eventually maybe students independently on their own mobile devices, they then can, can move these words and um, practice with this. So that's taking what's an open resource in the form of a PDF that works already really well in person to something that I can either present and use synchronously in a virtual class or uh, potentially assign to students for them to do asynchronously. Um, and then thinking about literacy learners especially, um, you know, there's that PDF resource there, same type of thing. I can put it into something like WordWall or Google Slides or Google Jamboard. Um, where we can use it in a more interactive way in our virtual class. Uh, and then there's also options for students to work on it um, on their own outside of class time. So one other one that I wanna show that we very well might be using uh, during the uh, makerspace that's related to the literacy resources, um, but there will likely be other makerspaces, especially depending on what your interests are. Um, the other resource to show is also about pronunciation and even spelling to some extent. Um, so I'm curious, once I get this set up here, who is familiar with, who's familiar with the color vowel chart? Have you used the color vowel chart? Have you been trained in the color vowel chart? If you wanna go into the chat and just put a, a yes or no um, to let us know if this is something that you're already somewhat familiar with. So some yeses, some noes, never seen this before. Great, so this one, you go to colorval.com, Karen Taylor and Shirley Thompson, there's a lot of training opportunities that are free and, and at different levels um, to learn much more, but what you're seeing is essentially all the vowel sounds in English. And what we might do in one of the maker spaces is to bring in some folks from Color Vowel to, to help us learn about how we might teach pronunciation or spelling with this and then create a resource um, like what you'll see in just a second. Um, so since this may be the first time for many of you, I'll kind of preview what sort of a little bit about what the, the Color Vowel track gets into and how we might use it with our literacy learners. Um, so just looking at these right here, we have 
purple shirt. We have white tie and a cup of mustard. So if we isolate, and I'm, I'm doing the teacher talk here, this isn't how I would do it with the class, but we have purple shirt, er, that er vowel sound, or white tie, I, and a cup of mustard, ah. Uh. So we can think of some words that would have uh, these sounds. So white tie, there might be acquire, there might be um, final, imply, uh, licenses, minor, prior, nine, and many, many others. Um, or with a cup of mustard, we might have, let's see, construction, function, subsequent, uh, government, and so on, or even just one, right? So taking this idea that we can get students in a more brain-friendly way to better understand the sounds of English and to build an intuition for the spelling in English, we can then transfer that into something like this that we might create as part of the makerspace um, using this color vowel organizer um, that's, that has a Creative Commons license on it and taking words from that story, the Max has a job story, and seeing which words might fit into um, some of these, these color vowel categories. So taking an example here, if we're looking at Thursday, right? Thursday, how many syllables? Two syllables. Which syllable has the stress? Thur -er -er Thursday. And what do you think? Put in the chat. Is it white tie Thursday? Is it purple shirt Thursday? or a cup of mustard Thursday. What's the color vowel in Thursday? Purple and shirt, teacher, purple shirt. Purple shirt, yeah, that's right. And so we can move that into the purple shirt right there. Um, let's do just one more. How about, uh, let's see, how about money? So with money, is it white tie money, purple shirt money, or a cup of mustard money? And Rachel, I for some reason can't see the chat. So if you want to tell me what you think, or if you want to read oh, out what yeah, people are they, saying. They got it. These guys got are it. pulling with their vowel sounds. We got uh, mustard, cup of mustard, cup of mustard. Yeah. Excellent. Good. <laughs> so we might do this with the class, right? And it's a different way that we can still work within that context of the story, right? Taking the whole of the work unit and the story and diving into some of the parts, um, focusing on pronunciation in a way that can be really fun. And, and uh, if you're not, if this is brand new to you, it might be really exciting, but what, what do these other things mean? Um, and putting into this organizer that in class we can do together. And then outside of class, students could have their own organizer that's just this ever growing list of vocabulary tied to the different pronunciation, the color vowel sounds of those words. Um, so, and again, this is all coming from, um, okay, there we go. it's just coming from these PDFs, right? Taking what were PDFs, trying to find tech tools that could work, you know, if in my case, our classes, we don't mail out learning packets. I know some classes do. So it's difficult. We can't expect that students can print things off, but if we can, create these resources in a way that are easily presentable virtually and potentially can be used asynchronously, that would be awesome. Um, so thank you for indulging me in that teaser. Again, this is just one of the, the makerspaces that we are hoping to launch in the spring. Um, there's gonna be more, much more to come uh, in coordination with Maryland TESOL's spring events uh, in 2021. Um, so in terms of how you might participate, whether it's with those literacy resources or something else, if you, we, we invite you to share with us what types of resources you would hope to create or types of resources that you might need with your classes, um, please fill out this Google form that we'll put in the chat uh, to express your interest in these upcoming Makerspace projects so that we can see that you're interested and contact you um, as more information becomes available uh, before we launch. Uh, sometime early mid spring. I want to thank um, also Gina for bringing up that, you know, our goal in this session is to recruit people for the the T-Style maker space. But another goal that we had was to present this idea in hopes that it will spark 
um, more interest in doing similar PD type things um, with other instructors. So, you know, if you are ABE, GED, maybe you don't want to participate in a TESOL maker space, um, something to think about how can we take a different approach to PD that serves both the learning side, but also the providing of resources. Um, so thank you for popping that in the chat, Gina. So yeah, I put the um, Google Forms link into the chat box and that is just intended to to gather, you know, who would be interested? How many people do we have who are interested? If you want to share that link with your colleagues, with your teachers, with whoever, please feel free to share that link. It also gives you the opportunity at the end to suggest, um, to ask questions or to make suggestions for, hey, like I really need a resource for um, my intermediate level ESL learners uh, for listening or, you know, like make suggestions about what resources you feel like you're missing and also what tools you, you want to learn how to use so that we can, as we're planning these TESOL maker spaces for the spring, um, we can think about what, what do teachers and programs really need right now. So please fill out the form. Does anyone have any questions? We, we can take any questions. <laughs> I like how I put that twice on the slide. We really, really want any questions, any questions? <laughs> I, I, I sort of am thinking back to what you were sharing a little bit earlier, Rachel, through that process of learning Wakelet and Google Forms. And I think even that process for you was probably incredibly helpful, um, you know, in terms of putting together your thoughts and your ideas and like sending out the concepts. So I feel like even that part of this learning process could be really helpful. I also want to say like full disclosure, you can sign up to hear more information and like, this isn't like an in blood contract. So, no, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're just interested in hearing more about Rachel and Xavier's ideas, like you absolutely can sign up to hear more. Um, um, but yes, I, I really think that this would be wonderful. And they're both incredible resources if you think about doing your own makerspace, maybe pivoting the idea. Um, uh, I've said this before because we had individuals from a different Virginia project um, support a different session for us earlier this week, but the power and collaboration is really wonderful in adult education. So we're really grateful to have Xavier here with us today since he's from a program in Northern Virginia. Um, so Rachel put the form in the chat box. I will also make sure that the, the link to the form goes up on our archive when the recording as well as the presentation is available too. Um, but just quickly, if you don't mind, I'm gonna put a session feedback survey link in the chat box as well. If you can just let us know how today went. Um, we can't, know, if we don't know, we can't grow. That's what I've been saying as my special phrase of the week. So the more that uh, feedback that you can provide positive or negative, um, you know, we're more than happy to do this. Um, interested in a makerspace, great. So, hey, we accomplished our goal. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for um, participating in this morning's session. Um, we certainly hope that you learned something or even sparked interest in participating. Um, Looking forward to seeing everyone in the future, and I hope everyone has a wonderful, safe, and happy new year. Thank you, Gina. Yep. Thanks, Gina. Thanks, everyone. Yep.